This Tuesday marks the 104th anniversary of the worst hard rock mining disaster in American history. The Granite Mountain Speculator Mine Fire of June 8, 1917 in Butte claimed the lives of 168 miners. The tragedy would spur walkout strikes and hard-fought efforts to improve working conditions, safety, and wages. In our Montana moment, the fire that left a city in mass mourning and the ordinary miners who became heroes. Kevin Mackey reports. The Granite Mountain Speculator Mine Memorial stands in view of the long-closed Granite Mountain Mine and its sister, the now-buried Speculator. In 1917, miners like those in the granite worked around the clock to provide copper for the Great War. When these guys went to work that evening on June 8th, 410 guys went down into the mine. And, uh, 168 of them didn't make it. While unions complained of unsafe conditions, the Granite Mountain was actually one of Butte's safest mines. The morning shift lowered a 1,200-foot cable into the mine to extend electrical power for safety. But at 2,450 feet, it slipped. The day shift crew said, we've had it, we're going home. The next crew coming on at 10 o'clock said, that's okay, we can take care of it. Shift boss Sully Salau and his partner Baldy Collins descended into the mine to inspect the damaged cable. You gotta remember, 1917, no flashlights, no big power lights. In pitch black, the only light came from the men's carbide lanterns. This, this is a replica of the exposed cable they found. The copper wire wrapped in jute, covered with oil, night. encased in this lead. Sully held onto the timbers with one hand, his oh, lantern yeah. in the other. He reaches out and his lantern touches one of these pieces of this wire, that it, this cable that had broken apart. That sparked the fire. Sully stayed below. To notify all these miners, the 410 guys that just came on shift, that there was a fire down below. Sully would save hundreds of men, but he would die himself. Meantime, Baldy Collins ascended to the surface. So he could notify the, the hoist house that there was a fire on the surface not to let anybody down into the mine. But station tenders Mike Conroy and Pete Sheridan were already on it. Said, you know, we got buddies down there on the 2200. If, if we go down, we can pick up a lot of those guys and bring them up right now. Nobody knew that hoist lowered Mike and Pete right into the fire. They brought the cage to the surface, and when they did, these two guys were wrapped in embrace. Mike Conroy and Pete Sheridan were the only men to die of burns. Most died of asphyxiation. Choking on the smoke, most of those below escaped through a maze of tunnels connecting to granite with several other mines. Manus Dugan was a nipper. He sharpened and delivered tools to the miners. Manus knew his way around underground. He was like a tunnel rat. In this unsafe, noxious air, Manus knew there was no way out. 2,400 feet below ground, the nipper gathered 29 miners together. 25 of Dugan's men would survive. He said, I'm going to take you down this crosscut. It's a dead end. We're going to bulkhead ourselves in here. We can't get out anywhere on this level. We're going to die. So we're going to bulkhead this up. We're going to live because they're going to come and find us afterward. In insufferable heat, they were there for 36 hours, but not before Manus left the bulkhead to find help, only to die himself. At the same time, two levels above on the 2200, shift boss James D. Moore gathered nine guys together. And they did the same thing. They bulkheaded themselves in. These guys were in there for 50 hours, same conditions as Manus. Five of James Moore's men would survive, but James himself would perish after he and his fellow miners were rescued. So many heroes. This is a beautiful monument. This is such a tribute, not just to those lost on that uh, fateful day, June 8, 1917, but to all the miners. When we come back, the final letters of Manus Dugan and James D. Moore. The minute you get to the Granite Mountain Mine Memorial, it hits you. This is Butte in its rawest form. From the materials that make up the monument to the historical mining landscape of its past to the people it honors. And this is a reflection of the gratitude for those people who put us here. They gave everything. Letters to their wives were retrieved from the bodies of both Manus Dugan and James D. Moore. The letters give first-hand accounts of the terrible conditions they faced. By the time all men were rounded together Friday night, we were all caught in a trap. The gas was everywhere. We built a bulkhead and then a second for safety. Dear pet, the gas broke about 11.15. I tried to get all the men out, but the smoke was too strong. I got some of the boys with me in a drift and put in a bulkhead. The letters exude calm in those chaotic hours. We have rapped on the air pipe continuously since 4 o'clock Saturday morning. No answer. Must be some fire. 
My dear little wife, try not to worry. I know you will but trust in God. Everything will come out all right. There are flags of 16 nations representing the miners' home countries. Some of these immigrant miners were conflicted about providing copper for weaponry that may be used against their home countries, but they had a job to do. It didn't matter where you were from. You know, when you faced tragedy and you faced danger, you faced it together as, as a brotherhood. I realize the hard work ahead of the rescue men have not confided my fears to anyone, but welcome death with open arms as it is the last act we must all pass through. Dear Pet, there's a young fellow here, Clarence Marthy. He has a wife and two kiddies. Tell her we'd done the best we could. The sounds most dreaded by a miner's wife or mother would be the bells and whistles that sounded on the hill when there was a tragedy. And some referred to it as the cry of the banshee, the Irish, because when you heard that certain cadence off those bells, you knew someone had died. There'd been an accident. And so from down further the hill, you would come up with your loved ones to see who came out of the shaft. To my dear wife and mother, it takes my heart to be taken from you so suddenly and unexpectedly. But think not of me, for if death comes, it will be in a sleep without suffering. Madge, dear, the place is for you, Manus. You will know your Jim died like a man, and his last thought was for his wife, that I love better than anyone on earth. Tell mother and the boys goodbye. With love to my pet, may God take care of you. Your loving Jim. James D. Moore. Some are going to get, you know, pensions or uh, finances because of the death, but it certainly wasn't enough to, to patch things over or uh, feed their families in some cases. And so from one tragedy led to others. But still, you had those wives and those mothers that were just butte tough, tougher than hell. Seven o'clock. All alive. But air getting bad. One small piece of candle left. Nine o'clock. In the dark. Perched high on a hill, the Granite Mountain Mine Memorial stands as a hallowed place of heroes. Kevin Mackey, NBC, Montana.